Hi everyone, in this video we'll continue our experiments with the hydraulic system and buggy the tractor. As I mentioned in the last part we'd need a reduction gear between the pump and the engine, and the best option would be the engine gearbox from OKA. The torque will be transmitted through the drive gear and it'll be possible to select the gear reduction rate using the gears. Before its installation in its place we need to block the differential, otherwise the pump won't spin and the torque will be transmitted to the second free drive. We chose the easiest method of blocking using the planetary cluster gear welding. Now we can assemble everything and connect the gearbox to the engine. It's good that I've left all the elements of the clutch, I sort of knew that they'd still be useful. I also want to make the gearbox attachment. We'll install a new starter as the previous one has been changed according to the previous configuration. Now we can check the assembly. Everything is spinning. Next step is to weld the drive rod to the pump slab. The rod was grooved on the lathe in order not to catch a beat during the welding. I inserted the drive into the gearbox and welded the bracket for the pump opposite the box. I engaged the first gear to check the drive rotation. There was no beating which means you can put everything together and check the workout. Guess now the engine will easily cope with the gear pump. In order the oil cannot flow out of the gearbox I closed the hole with the second drive and fixed it through the ring on the bracket. Assembled everything in hurry as I wanted to check the work of hydraulic system immediately. Now the gearbox stands at first speed with the gear ratio 1 to 4. There are not enough revs for the pump. At the second speed it's 1 to 2. The pump works but that's not enough. Further I engaged the third gear, it's 1 to 1 and if to be more precisely 1 to 1.3, so this is the optimal gear for the gear pump and the engine, by the way it doesn't strain or go deaf, there's still not enough flow for the correct work of two tracks in opposite directions at a time, as it turned out the gear pump GP16 wasn't enough with its 30 liters per minute, but here's some progress, the engine doesn't go deaf, this is already good sign, we need to try to increase the flow. So we took GP32, it's already designed for 60 liters. There's no drive for it, and we need to make it by ourselves. The spline part for it fits from the automobile cardan. It fits just perfect. I only need a core, the fixators were cut off on the lathe. In order to place two bearings on it I extended the detail using a clutch and pierced it for the bearings. Everything will be fixed on the slab screwed through the spacers. And the case for the bearings will be an accidentally found detail of the drive shaft from Moskwich 41. I'll stop the bearing with a part of the dust cover from the same drive shaft. I installed the pump in its place, but connected it through a fully functional shortened drive with two drive shafts. They'll compensate any beating. I've got another idea to divide the flows and to put its own pump on each track. Since there's a second free drive we'll connect the second GP16 to it. There'll be two independent flows for 30 and 60 liters. One track will spin faster. This can be further adjusted with a flow control valve or a ball valve. We installed a control valve for the second pump. The space in the cabin got decreased. The rates are rising, it's exciting to see how the hydraulic system will work. Finally managed to turn at the place of flow. Now it's enough for two fluid power motors. The engine easily copes with two pumps at the third gear. It's not clear yet why it got deaf in the previous part with one pump. As there appeared some place we can install a hydraulic cylinder on it for a bucket. For this purpose we welded a bracket near the bucket. The rod length of the cylinder is 400 millimeters, that's pretty enough. 
The bucket latches should be cut as they are no longer needed. We connected the hoses to the hydraulic cylinder and checked. Everything is ready. Time to put on some warm clothes for the snow removal and go out to the yard. Everything seemed to work and the power was enough, but that's not how it turned out. I tried to climb the snowdrift without clearing, but the tractor jibbed into the snow and couldn't move any further. The engine didn't get deaf, but the tracks just stuck. At the very moment I got frustrated and was nearly to give up. That just couldn't happen. Something is missing somewhere because such powerful installation should work much better. We need to measure the pressure at the top, it should be about 200 bar. That's the standard measure the pumps give according to the passport. We plugged the manometer in and measured the pressure. It turned out to be four times less than declared. There's a valve on the control valve that is adjusted under the minimal pressure and not the maximum one as the sellers assured. We screwed it completely up to the stop, thereby excluding it from the system. We stopped the track with pipe as the floors were slippery and it was impossible to measure the pressure normally. The pressure rose decently up to 150 bar. The last thing that could cause a problem was the lack of the oil as the pumps are connected through a T-joint and each of them hogs the cover and both lack it. For each pump we made its own flow and pushback. Now each pump will have its own filter. We also connected the drains to the motors in order the blocks didn't get squeezed from the shafts. Now the top pressure turned out to be 210 bar and the track with 32 hydraulic pump turned out to be reactive. It makes sense to remove the speed using a reduction gear. Then the drive torque will be enough to climb any snowdrift for sure. New test with a completely refined hydraulic system is on turn. It definitely got better, but still not enough. The fluid power motors need the reducers. I rolled myself an elevation and finally managed to climb the snowdrift. That day there was above zero temperature and the snow just restrained the tracks. We got a two large tracks area, and the ground grousers made of the angle bars prevent the turn a lot. It's only possible to turn around by the rolled way. I sadly have to admit that this time the snow won. It's time to finish the experiment. But until the buggy hasn't returned into its original state, I want to try the chain reducers. The buggy design didn't allow making it normally. The levers lack rigidity, they bend and the chain flies off. Now we can say that we tried everything or almost everything and the buggy can be returned in its stock form. We redone everything in two days. On the first day we removed all the hydraulic system and installed the gearbox. On the second one we adjusted the suspension and the wheels, changed all the liquids including antifreeze. The reducer was also welded in the gearbox. Now the buggy is able to drift. The bottom of the frame and the lower levers were also reinforced. We decided not to connect the rear brakes yet. Now it's possible to make a burnout on the snow. Now we can summarize the project with the hydraulic system and admit the pros and cons. As it turned out there are no cons, although I'd mention a huge amount of time, but it was spent with benefit and gave a new experience. The great advantage is that now I have a full set of hydraulics except for some little things. I'll save it cause maybe by next season there'll be a chance to install it into the homemade skid steer loader. Also we returned the buggy its previous look that will remain. And that's all for today. Thanks everyone for supporting and waiting for other projects. They will be released as soon as possible. In the meantime, thank you all for your attention. If you liked this video subscribe to the channel and leave your comments. See you in the next projects.